the process is, method is very, very simple. Take a substance whose molecular weight is already known to us. So weight of the solute is known, weight of the solvent is known, molecular weight of the solute is known. Find out the elevation in boiling point. Kb can be calculated. So Kb of all the solvents normally we use are calculated and tabulated. You can anytime use the value for calculation of molecular weight of an unknown substance. This is how the elevation in boiling point can be used to find out molecular weight of a substance. Now, uh, let's discuss just one more uh, important information. If you see the formula which you have derived properly, you can see your delta Tb is proportional to the molality. Molality is the number of moles per weight of the solvent in kilograms. So can we try, can we understand the delta Tb as something which depends on the number of particles. So it does not matter what substance we take. If molality is 1, the delta Tb has to be a certain value. Now whatever substance you take, keep the molality 1, delta Tb has to be same, provided we take a particular solvent. So what it means is delta Tb is depending on the number of particles. So if you dissolve 5 moles of sugar, you get delta Tb as x. Instead of 5 moles of sugar, now if you dissolve 5 moles of glucose, same condition, same uh, solvent, will the value of delta Tb be the same or different? It has to be same because as you can see from the expression, delta Tb depends only on the number of moles of the substance or it depends only on the molality of the solution. It differs only with the molality of the sub solution. It does not depend on the substance that we use. So this particular property, we call it elevation in boiling point, depends on the number of particles. Therefore, elevation in boiling point is referred to as colligative property. So what exactly is a colligative property? It is a property which depends only on the number of particles, not on the nature of the particles. You dissolve an organic solvent, if the number of particles remain same, your colligative property has to be same. If it is an inorganic substance, any substance that you dissolve, it depends only on the number, not on the nature. Such properties are called elevation in boiling point. Such properties are called colligative properties. Elevation in boiling point is a colligative property. So we have seen that delta Tb is equal to Kb into Wb by Mb into 1000 by Wa. Using this, we can find out molecular weight of a substance. Now one uh, particular issue we face in this uh, finding of molecular weight. Let us consider sodium chloride. As we already know, the actual molecular weight of sodium chloride is 58.5, which is 23 plus 35.5. When uh, we try to find out molecular weight of sodium chloride using this particular colligative property, elevation in boiling point, it is seen that, it is observed that the molecular weight you get from this calculation is 29.25. Which is not the actual molecular weight, it comes to be half of the actual molecular weight, which means the molecular weight we have calculated using this method is coming wrong. Now, this molecular weight for some reason is wrong. We call it abnormal. So, obviously, the question is. Is it happening with every substance or only with some substance and how does it happen? Here you can see molecular weight is becoming half. As you see, it is abnormal. It does not happen with all the substances. Many substances you are getting an actual normal molecular weight without any error whatsoever. 
but there are some substances you get an error. Let's consider another substance. You know, this is benzoic acid. The molecular weight when we calculated using the abnormal, uh, sorry, using the colligative properties, it is seen that the molecular weight of benzoic acid is found to be double the actual molecular weight. So some cases it is getting halved, some cases it is getting doubled, some cases it is in between. So there is an abnormality in the molecular weight calculated in many cases. We will try to understand why this abnormality happening and why it is not happening with every substance, where is it, where it is happening and why it is happening. Let us consider sodium chloride once again. As you know, sodium chloride in aqueous solution dissociates to form Na plus and Cl minus. As you see, number of particles gets doubled. Now, we are trying to find out molecular weight of a substance using a colligative property. Colligative property is something which depends on number of particles, not on the nature of particles. Now, when the number of particles are getting doubled, as you have seen from the graph, colligative property also gets doubled. When delta Tb gets doubled, obviously the molecular weight should get halved. So wherever there is dissociation, the calculated molecular weight will be less than the actual molecular weight because as the dissociation happens, number of particles increases, colligative property increases, molecular weight decreases. In the case of sodium chloride, it is exactly half because number of particles is getting doubled, colligative property obviously will get doubled, molecular weight will get halved. Whereas in benzoic acid, you will see it is getting doubled. Obviously, you must have guessed this must be getting associated. I will show you how it gets associated. Whereas in the case of sodium chloride, it is getting dissociated. Because of hydrogen bonding, the benzoic acid gets associated. These are hydrogen bondings. Now, the association reduces the number of particles. When the number of particles gets reduced, the colligative property gets reduced, molecular weight gets increased. So, abnormality happens under two conditions, either there is a dissociation or there is an association. So, the next obvious question was, how do we uh, correct this abnormality? So, a scientist called Van Hoff studied about this particular issue, came out with the solution he came out with a correction factor called Van Hoff factor. So, the expression which we have derived is now has to be modified. Your delta Tb now would be Kb into Wb divided by Mb into 1000 divided by Wa, Wa. Multiply this with a correction factor I which is called Van Hoff factor. So basically, Van Hoff factor, what it does is, whatever abnormality is created, that abnormality is corrected. So it's a correction factor. So what it means is, when you use the I value, the abnormality that we have seen with sodium chloride would not happen. So, what will be the value of I in the case of sodium chloride? By what number we should multiply here so that the abnormality is removed? If you remember the molecular weight we had calculated by colligative property in the case of sodium chloride, it happened to be 29.25, it is half of the actual molecular weight which is 58.5. I for sodium chloride has to be 2 because your molecular weight has to be doubled to get the actual molecular weight. So, I value for sodium chloride is 2. 
Now, how would you know the value of i? It is very easy if the substance is a strong electrolyte. Just calculate the number of particles it produces. That is going to be the value of i. So, obviously, what will be the value of i for K2SO4? Since K2SO4 is a strong electrolyte, this dissociates to form three particles. Therefore, value of i in the case of K2SO4 is 3. Similarly, what will be the value of i when the association takes place? It has to be less than 1. Since here two particles come together to form a single particle, your i value has to be half because molecular weight has to be multiple, uh, you know, the value of molecular weight that you get is double the actual molecular weight. So, one Hoff factor is a correction factor which removes the abnormality. So, you must have understood how exactly you can get the value of i. You can get i by various methods. One method is the actual molecular weight divided by abnormal molecular weight. Actual molecular weight in the case of sodium chloride is 58.5, abnormal molecular weight is 28.25 you see the value of i becomes 2. Now, if you translate that into colligative property, we can write the value of i as the, this is the actual molecular weight, this is the abnormal molecular weight. In terms of colligative property, when you write, it will be the reverse of it, because they are inversely related. So, the actual colligative, pro observed colligative property, there are two kinds of colligative properties. One is observed and other is measured. What it actually means is, you observe whatever happens when you dissolve a substance. In the case of sodium chloride, there will be an abnormality. Colligative property will be double you find out what is the actual colligative property had there been no association or dissociation. That is the actual colligative property. So, to find out the value of i, your observed colligative property should be here. Measured colligative property should be here. Because measured colligative property should not be showing any abnormality. Observed colligative property should have some abnormality. That, uh, so, this divided by this gives you the value of i. So, this is how we correct the abnormality resulting out of the association or dissociation. So, the next obvious question is, what if the electrolyte is not strong? How would you calculate the value of i? So, let us discuss that next, then you will understand how exactly you can uh, find out the value of phi if the substance is not strongly electrolyte. Let us assume there is a substance called A B, dissociates to form A plus and B minus. Let us assume that this is a weak electrolyte. Now, as you know, weak electrolytes do not dissociate completely. The dissociation will be only partial. Suppose the degree of dissociation. So, let us consider reaction A B giving A plus and B minus. Let us assume that this is a weak electrolyte. Let the initial concentration of A B be C, moles per liter. Suppose the degree of dissociation of this electrolyte is alpha. The amount of A B remaining would be only C minus C into 1 minus alpha. Amount of A plus will be C alpha. Amount of B minus also would be C alpha. So, for a substance A B getting dissociated to form A plus and B minus, suppose degree of dissociation is alpha, 1 for factor is high. Total number of particles produced on dissociation is n. You can easily derive that i minus 1 divided by n minus 1 is equal to alpha. Using this, you can find out the value of i if value of alpha is known to you, where alpha is degree of dissociation. 
So normally what uh, information you get in the question is degree of dissociation will be given to you provided the substance is a weak electrolyte. Find out the value of I to substitute for the correction of molecular weight. We have discussed one colligative property, the elevation in boiling point. There are two more colligative properties. One is depression and freezing point. And yet another one is osmotic pressure. Yeah, before I speak about it, let me add one more thing. In case of association, please try to derive an ex expression for alpha. In the case of dissociation, this is the expression. For association, try on your own to de uh, derive an expression. So according to that, we will have to find out the value of i. Let me explain uh, what freezing point is, how exactly the depression in freezing point happens. Let look at the graph. There is a temp there is an in the x-axis we plot the temperature, y-axis we plot vapor pressure. Let's assume we have pure water in a tumbler. You can see as the temperature is decreased, this is the temperature at room temperature. This is the vapor pressure at room temperature. As you decrease the temperature, vapor pressure decreases. At this particular point, the freezing takes place. So it is T of F. You further decrease the temperature, you have the frozen solvent. In the solution, the vapor pressure is already less than the actual vapor pressure of the solvent. As you reduce the temperature, as you can see, vapor pressure keeps decreasing. At this point, the freezing takes place. So this is the freezing point of the solution. This is freezing point of the solvent. This difference gives you the depression in freezing point, delta Tf. The, exactly the way we have done elevation in boiling point, depression freezing point can be used to find out molecular weight of a given substance because this again is a colligative property. With this, we completed this chapter. Hope you have understood all the concepts. Thank you so much for attending the class. See you. Thank you so much.